afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. I know I have been very, very slow at pumping out these video updates, but let me tell you right now, we are going to get very active on this YouTube channel this week because we have a lot to talk about and a lot to get ahead of this upcoming weekend, particularly here in the Sunshine State. Thank you all very much for taking some time out of your Monday. Happy Monday, for that matter, December 11th, 2023. Thank you very much for joining me today. Please like and share this video. It is actually critical we spread this information around because no one is really discussing this as of yet or some starting to scrutinize what could possibly be taking shape here in Florida and the rest of the southeast for that matter but we're going to dive in deep not only in this video but tonight during our 8 p.m. live stream so please like and share this video if you enjoy what you see and subscribe to the channel if you're brand spanking new to the weather center all right guys let's get into this so we just had a very, very strong cold front push through, and let me give you a little bit of a synopsis. That front came through. We saw a really spectacular squall line come through late last night. I was actually out driving in it post SeaWorld shenanigans, where we saw lots of heavy rain on the I-4 corridor and lots of frequent cloud-to-ground lightning and some good thunder out there. That's not the main event that we're talking about, but that trailing edge of the front that just came through the southeast and is now working its way towards Cuba and the Yucatan is going to be half of the puzzle that sparks up what it is that could possibly bring some very, very significant weather to our own backyard this weekend. If you take a look, this is our 12Z European model, and I'll tell you guys, as I've been watching this information update day to day, hour by hour, it's been getting more and more sinister with every single 0 and 12 cardinal update. As we go through time, you can see we have a lot of good shower and thunderstorm activity in the Caribbean moving into Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. This is the back end of that cold front that just moved through, and as it begins to return back to the north or retreat back to the north into the Gulf of Mexico, watch what tends to happen. We get a little bit of cyclogenic that occurs just to the north or right in between the Yucatan Channel and Cuba where we see a low pressure system begin to develop and then push towards the north northeast while at the same time if you look up off the Gulf Coast of Louisiana a polar front supported low is coming down off the Gulf Coast moving in that same general direction so we have a double barrel low setup one that's moving over Cuba a very similar path we typically see during the tropical season this is not tropical in nature but it's very reminiscent of what we typically see storms do as they come up out of the Western Caribbean. And then we have our polar front jet digging in across the Southern Plains, helping to spit up a bear clinic system off the coast of Louisiana and Texas. As these systems converge, I'll go ahead and continue to move through time. Look at how much significant weather activity we have for the state of Florida. The bear clinic system in the Gulf of Mexico gets almost entirely absorbed. According to the Euro, while we have a 995 millibar low pressure making landfall somewhere in the South and Southwest portion of the Florida Peninsula. So this is going to bring some very hellacious weather activity along with it. And like I said, guys, with every European model update, there has been a little wiggling and wobbling in terms of intensity. But for the last 24 hours now, like clockwork, we've been seeing a very similar trend come up run to run. You can see the same thing on the GFS. The 12Z GFS looks just as aggressive as the 12Z European model. You see both of those systems begin to form up with the GFS thinking it could be just a little bit higher or further to the north in latitude in terms of where we see that potential subtropical system supported by our STJ begin to take shape off the west coast of Florida. As these systems move in, look at just how abundant the rainfall and thunderstorm activity is anticipated to be as this system deepens down rapidly, right about at the same millibar strength or millibar intensity as the European model is depicting, just a bit further to the north, crossing the Florida Georgia state line as of 12 Zulu on the 17th. This is Sunday morning. We're thinking this could take shape, and it looks like all of our models are slowly but surely coming into unison. During the end of the week last week when I first started to investigate this, even though I was off the weather center, I noticed a little bit of discontinuity in terms of time. Some of the models, particularly the GFS, wanted this to brew up and form and crash into the state of Florida right around the 15th to the 16th especially of December, whereas the rest of our models, the Canadian, the Icon especially, and the Euro, all were thinking this could be a Sunday through into Monday, maybe even Tuesday type of event. We're starting to see those lines close up a little bit, and I'm definitely thinking this weekend, particularly Saturday night, into Sunday, especially, we're going to start to see all this severe weather begin to pan out. So this is very interesting what we have happening here. This is once again the 12 Z year and we're looking at the 300 millibar level to get a feel for what the jet streams are doing. And right now because of El Nino our subtropical jet which it has been consistently doing for several months now is screaming across the Gulf of Mexico jutting across northern Mexico the southern tip of Texas moving across the Gulf of Mexico and directly west to east over the state of Florida. That's kicker number one. If you watch what the polar front jet does we kind of get a little bit of a return to zonal flow for a 
little while, but notice this what looks to be a cutoff entity, if not a very, very positively tilted trough that eventually scrapes through the four corners in desert southwest just as we get a little bit of a jet max from our subtropical jet over Mexico moving into the Gulf. This interaction between two jets right about there, if you guys look, is why I do believe we're going to have widespread severe weather for maybe the Gulf Coast, but more particularly central and southern Florida especially. That's why I'd mentioned at the beginning of this video, we could be looking at a tornado outbreak very reminiscent of what we saw in October here in our own backyards this time around. If you take this through, you can see that our jets become very discombobulated with a nice little cold pocket that starts to form over the Gulf of Mexico. I know these are 300 millibar winds, but when I show you the thickness lines associated with these types of events or with these types of features, you'll be able to identify that cold air spillage brought in by the polar front jet clashing, and I mean colliding with our subtropical jet, which is only going to increase the dynamics we have in play to bring about not only strong winds, both convective and non-convective, but also that tornado potential. I also thought this was very interesting. This is our 850 millibar relative vorticity. And if you take this through time, we're using the Euro again, watch how you can identify two separate circulations in the mid levels of the environment right about here. So right off the Gulf Coast of Texas, Louisiana, you have a cluster of vorticity or spinach in the mid levels of the environment. And then down here, we have something else undergoing cyclogenesis. So two individual systems that are likely to cyclogenesize or go cyclogenetic, basically develop guys in layman's terms, and then collide with one another. So we have not only battling air masses here, battling jets, but we have two separate systems that are going to come together a la almost like Fujiwara. You can make a case that it's kind of like that, but obviously we're not dealing with tropical entities here. Same concept though, they're going to merge. And as you continue through to the back end of the loop, notice how we get a lot of really good vorticity right over top South and Central Florida, particularly Southeast and along the space coastline of Florida, right about at the time we roll into Sunday night, approaching the very early morning hours of Monday. So according to the Euro, according to the Icon, and most of the Canadian model runs, GFS still being a little early, it does seem like the main event is going to be during the daytime, which we have going for us, starting Sunday morning as we begin to start the day. Highly encourage you double check, if not triple check the weather before you begin to go about your business, prepping for the new week, or like some of us, myself included, who are churchgoers first thing in the morning, you might want to triple check exactly what satellite and radar on your local news station is suggesting you do in terms of what the weather activity could look like as we're waking up Sunday morning, especially here in the weather center. We're going to keep you updated as we go throughout the week. All right, so here's our GFS 1,000 to 500 thickness. And in case you get a little lost looking at all the funky colors and lines here, essentially, as the name implies, thickness is how tall or how shallow the atmosphere is. Because the atmosphere is like a liquid, or you can almost argue it's like a plastic when you have the cold or warm air moving about underneath the troposphere. When it's colder, the thicknesses tend to shrink. And when it's warmer, the thicknesses tend to rise, just like plastics and rubbers during the warm and cold days, where in the warm, it'll expand, and in the cold, it'll naturally shrink and get a little more brittle. As you go through time, you can see that cold pocket working its way across the southern plains, beginning to move its way down into the Gulf Coast states. And there it is right there where I would mentioned we get a little bit of what looks to be a cold pocket. You can see how our thickness rapidly deepens or shrinks, if you will, right over Alabama and Mississippi down to 550 decameters is actually what we use the unit of measurement here for the thickness of the atmosphere. But in layman's terms, guys, so you understand what I'm explaining, this is where all of our bona fide cold air is. And look at all this surface surge of warmer thicknesses or warmer air resulting in a taller atmosphere over South Florida and into where the Bahamas and just off the coastline is. That is where our most substantial temperature discontinuity is likely to be piece of the puzzle in terms of why I think this is going to be a very, very substantial severe weather event for just the Florida Peninsula particularly. And if that wasn't enough, let's go to 850 millibars once more and look at the temperature anomaly. This is going to help to highlight where our temperature advection is and where our significant contrast or most substantial contrast between our warm air and our cold air is. And right about here, if you look, this is 6Z on Sunday. So this is early morning hours, Saturday into Sunday morning. As we go through time, look at how much warm advection we have occurring over the Bahamas, over the state of Florida. If I go back one panel, you can see how the entire state up into Georgia and maybe parts of South Carolina 
Carolina, we're seeing that maritime tropical air move into the north. It's going to be a weird orientation in terms of where our advection is coming from and where our low-level jet is likely to establish itself. I'll show you that on the next panel. But, guys, it goes without saying, you can see just how much of a delineation we have between that polar air breaking away from the polar front jet and our subtropical jet and our tropical air out ahead of it. And all that's going to do is help further enhance the thunderstorm activity. That cold air is dense, it's shallow, and it's strong. And it's essentially just going to lift that warm air out ahead of it. And as you can see, with that lift comes rising air, thunderstorms, and strong ones at that. Finally, this is our 850 millibar level. We're going to rapidly go through this 12Z European model once again. And you can see as this system begins to undergo cyclogenesis and come across Florida, we have some pretty spectacular values in terms of what our low-level jet could look like. Even if I stop the clock here at 18 Zulu, December 17th, Sunday morning, or I should say this is about the 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the state of Florida, we have winds upwards of 60, 70 knots at 850 millibars coming across the Space Coast, kind of the Melbourne Cocoa Beach Vero Beach area coming due east, which is also going to help to really amp up our wave heights along the east coast as well. And if I go one and then two panels out ahead of that, especially at 156 hours out, look at that small corridor we have right there approaching 80 knots of wind at only 850 millibars. So that's not far off the surface. So we're going to have quite the wind event faced with us this weekend. And with these mid-level winds screaming at 70, 80 knots, you best believe we're going to have a lot of good vertical wind shear out there to get these storms rotating. We're still about five days away, so we're only going to dig in so far with this video. We're actually going to start to close out the video as we speak. I just wanted to get eyes on this because it looks like the severe weather threat is going to transition from Dixie Alley from where we had those really bad tornadoes, especially in Tennessee and Kentucky over the last 24 hours. Multiple tornadoes. Unfortunately, there are a number of fatalities surfacing as we speak. It looks like that severe weather threat is going to go from the southeast into the Appalachians down here into the state of Florida. This is a bona fide El Nino worst case scenario if this does unfold as we are seeing, especially with our GFS and our European model. So Floridians, if you're watching this, we need to keep up with this and we need to keep an eye out because we might have a tornado or two knocking on the central Florida door within the next five to seven days. Thank you very much for watching, guys. As I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and close out this video now. i got to get back to work, and I want to continue to dig into this because I have been very busy over the last four days now, and I haven't had the opportunity to digest and absorb a lot of this that's going on. So please join us tonight if you want to get more into the weeds with exactly what's happening, not only for the Gulf Coast, but especially Florida to its entirety. We're going to talk all about that tonight at 8 p.m., guys. I hope to see you there. But until then, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.